Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and if you guys have been following these, i got a great story lined up for you tonight from Edwin Crow. I'm pretty sure all of you have seen many stories from him so far, and he's quickly become one of my favorite authors to be able to do things from. But before we move on to that, I actually have a, a special little thing we're doing in the beginning of the video. It's a great sponsor that uh, I'm sure all of you have been waiting for to hear about <laughs> show up on this channel as you've seen many, many times show up on other channels. Before we get started on tonight's story, I gotta tell you about our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> okay, honestly, I wanted to uh, take this as a meme, but I actually do play Raid Shadow Legends uh, on my own <laughs> before the, uh, the sponsorship came up. So I figured, uh, why not? So if you're tired of like those fluffy kind of cartoonish looking games, because I play other phone games as well, I play quite a few, in fact, then Raid Shadow Legends is actually a really a uh, great game for you guys to be able to play. All the characters in Raid Shadow Legends are probably the best looking characters you'll find in any kind of mobile game, or at least any that I've seen so far. Um, especially whenever you're a guy like me who likes to use monsters and be undead, uh, which I'll show you a couple of my champions here. This game is crazy popular, it's like 15 million downloads in the last six months, and um, one of the best parts about it is that it's free. I don't know if you guys play mobile games like I do, but whenever I'm looking for something to download and play, I don't want to spend money on it, like, ever. This gives you lots of opportunities to just be able to play it and not have to spend money. Let me go ahead and open up a couple shards. The thing in this game is that no matter if you're a good one or a bad one, then, you know, they're always still kind of useful. You can either you level them up and use them, like you'll see all my champions here, or what I expect to get mostly out of these shards is uh, ones to be able to feed off to my other champions. Okay, and the cool thing is, and I'm pretty sure this is why everybody's been getting Rage Shadow Legends uh, sponsorship these days, is because they want to get the word out that it's not just on mobile. Now, I know I'm talking about mobile here, but it's also a desktop game, and it is cross-platform, so you can actually go cross-device, play with the same um, users, play with the same, you know, characters and champions, things like that, however you want. So, if you take a look in the video description down below, there'll be a couple of special links that'll get you 100,000 silver coins, which you can see are used to open up those shards, uh, two clan boss keys, ten mystery shards, and a free awesome champion. It's the Executioner. The Executioner's the one that you get. Uh, he's really cool because they get set us up with one for like a horror thing, which is awesome. So, it'll only be available for the next 30 days, and I think we're in a loop year, so you might want to grab that quick in case the days get mixed up by March. Good luck, guys. I'll probably end up seeing you in some of these tournaments. Now, on to tonight's story. It was weird. One day I was an only child, and the next... The next I had an older brother. My parents didn't even warn me. Just one day he arrived and took my room, and I had to sleep in the basement. He arrived in a large, waxed raincoat. I remember the water droplets that hung to its surface as he leaned over me and offered me his hand. I ran behind my mother's leg and stayed there. He smiled back, and my mother apologized for me. That was that. It was obvious after a few days that he was their favorite. I mean, I had a lot of issues, and I knew I was a disappointment to them. I visited a therapist twice a week. I didn't talk that much. I never did. I think that was my main problem. I was fine. My parents thought otherwise. One day, my new brother came downstairs and handed me a used painting set and canvases. I ignored him, upset that he usurped me. He didn't say anything. Instead, he set up the easel and began to paint. He was incredible. I watched in awe as within minutes, he had painted things that I couldn't imagine were possible from a paintbrush. He finished with a painting of a door. It looked familiar but I wasn't sure. He set down the paints and he walked back upstairs. I stared at it for weeks. And then one day I decided to try it for myself. At first I was terrible, but as the months rolled on, I got better and better. I still didn't have the confidence to speak to my brother, but every now and then he'd make his way into the basement and look at what I'd painted. He'd stare at them with nostalgia in his eyes. He'd cry, I thought, dead behind the sofa watching him mentally critique my work. Keep it up, he said in a hushed tone. The hairs on my neck stood up, and I felt a warm glow around me, sometimes I'd not felt before. So I continued to paint. By the time I was a teenager, my brother was around less and less, but my paintings were as good as his when he first showed me. I really wanted him to see what I'd created. It was all because of him, after all. I waited one day in the living room. 
I stole glances out of the window, waiting for him to come home. And when he did, I jumped out of my chair and I ran to the door to greet him. He stepped back, as if not wanting to embrace me. Look at what I painted, I said to him. My parents appeared surprised. Even though I was 16, I rarely spoke. I ran to the basement door. I think you should follow him, my mother said to my brother. I waited for what seemed like hours until my brother walked down the stairs. I could barely see his face under the hood of his wax jacket. What do you think? I offered. He stopped into the light, examining the painting. Tears rolling down his cheeks. I put my hand in my mouth. It's beautiful, he said quietly, and began to cry. Upset, I raced up to him and hugged him. Thank you for teaching me, I said. Then I felt his body sway. I tried to hold on to him, but my grasp wasn't strong enough. He collapsed, hitting his head on the side of my desk and onto the floor. The following months were the worst of my life. My, my brother was dead. With my mental history, I was sent to a psychiatric hospital. They said I had an episode and tried to kill my brother. I didn't. I didn't. I swear. He fell. They said that it, it may have been a side effect of the medication I was on for my psychosis in general. After many sessions with the in-house psychiatrist, I was allowed access to painting materials. But to be honest, it wasn't that bad. I saw my parents once a week. I was able to paint. I thought about my brother a lot. I thought about that painting he did for me. The one with the door. I tried my best to remember it, and over and over I tried to paint it. Each time I stood back and I looked at it, something wasn't right. I never knew what. Until one day. One day I got it spot on. And that's when I realized what it was of. It was the front door of our house. Seeing it in front of me, it was so obvious. I peered at it from different angles. I remembered it all. I stared at the painting. In all the little details, the room began to get cold, so I, I put on a jacket. I placed the paintings in my pocket. When I was done, I gazed in awe. It was almost real. I stared and I cried. I wasn't going to see this front door for a long time, if ever. It frightened me. The longer I gazed, the more I wished I could just... I could just be standing outside. Knocking on it, waiting for my parents to answer. I pretended I was standing outside. For the first time in months, I felt... I felt free. I imagined the wind blowing as the rain fell. Imagine reaching out to turn the handle. I closed my eyes and I reached. I could feel the rain on my forehead. I could feel the cool air. I could hear the water slap against my jacket. I opened my eyes. I was there. I was there outside my parents' house. I, I panicked briefly before almost on autopilot. I walked through the door. I knocked. I felt I must be dreaming, and then the door opened. My mother stood there. Can I help you? Mom, it's your son. She tried to close the door. I placed my foot in the way. Please, just, just listen to me. She looked into my eyes, and there was a recognition there. She knew I was truthful. Come in, she said, confused. I saw a little boy in the living room. I knelt down to talk to him. He ran behind his mother's leg. I smiled, remembering. I tapped my pocket, feeling the painting set in there. And I knew what I needed to do. Hey there, kids. Thank you for listening to tonight's episode of the Creepypasta Storytime podcast. Or if you're watching on YouTube, thank you for subscribing to the YouTube channel. If you're not on YouTube, then thank you for listening on Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts and following there. If you guys are Reddit users, like I'm sure many of you are, if you're following those no sleep authors that are super cool. Uh, one other Reddit community you can always check out or be active in or talk about or post memes in is the Mr. Creepypasta Reddit. It's just r slash Mr. Creepypasta. You can always find the channel icon there. And also, I'll pop in every now and again and post random things because I can. And now, 
for patreon.com slash Mr. Creepypasta, which you can always find in the link in the description, I want to give you all a very big thanks. There's many of you down there in the descriptions um, who I give big thanks to, and everybody also at this tier, like Dr. Strawberry, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Chompinski, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, HG Weevil 3, Diana Krauss, Stephen Van Huss, Tristan Pelton, Nico Kao, The Ginger Bros, Dante Rao, Rafael Rodriguez, Last Blade Song, Don Muehlmeister, Eliminator 86, Nebsky, Steampunk Sinner, Optimistic Avocado, Caleb Dougal, Daniel Paulson, Finley, and Sky Harbor. You guys are the MVPs and you guys keep the channel running and I honestly cannot thank you enough for all that you do. That's all for tonight guys. Sweet dreams. <laughs>